thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate your time. I'll try not to waste it. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today, it's Monday, October 14th. Now, in case you don't know what I do here, I share with you a hot penny stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I do trade penny stocks every single day from bell to bell. And I'm not exaggerating. That is a literal exact definition of what I do for penny boys. Every day at Penny Boys, we invite anybody to come to our free members page and see what it is we do. We're scalping over there in the morning so that we can help you make money today, the day you come in. I trade from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. We find hot stocks. A lot of them are penny stocks. A lot of them aren't. We're playing all sorts of stocks. We're setting up the trades. We know where to get in, where to get out when things go good where to get out when things go bad. That's what's most important, risk management. You don't want to lose too much money. It's okay to lose, but if you win more often than you lose and you lose just a little each time you do lose, you're never going to go broke, folks. Well, we do this all day over there and every day I'm looking for a hot penny stock to share with you. Now, what's a hot penny stock? As far as I'm concerned, it is a stock under five bucks. It has a hot chart that looks like it's ready to run and has hot news has catalysts. You put hot information with a hot chart, you've got an explosive situation here, folks. And that's what we've got looking at ticker VVPR. The chart is looking good. Four hour chart caught my attention. One hour chart looks great, but I haven't looked at it in a couple hours because I've been busy trading with everybody else today. But I know she was climbing, so she may be doing better right now than I was anticipating. But in any case, when I came over here looking for catalysts, I found catalysts. I found lots of very strong catalysts. But I also discovered something very interesting about this company. It is not like most companies on the stock market. They have their priorities flipped. They call themselves a B corporation. You have to qualify for this. What that means is you put people and planet above profit. Not that you're not trying to make money. You are, but everything you do to make money helps people, helps your employees, helps your customer base, helps the planet. And that's what this company is doing. So when I'm going through the news and I'm going to share it with you, you look at some of their news and go, why would you do that? And then you dive into the news and read what their motivation is. It's like, oh, now I understand. So I really like this business and I like the catalyst and I like the chart. And I think you're going to like me share it with you too. So VVPR, Vivo Power International. She is a company out of the United Kingdom. She's been based there since 2016. She finished today. Ah, she's still climbing after market. She's at 96.74 cents. She's up uh, almost 24% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which are actually the stocks I prefer to trade. That is to say, over OTC penny stocks. First off, there's no transaction fees on the major exchange. So you can buy into a stock multiple times or sell multiple times, scaling in, scaling out. Try that on the OTC, you burn up all your profits. There's a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchange compared to the OTC. <laughs> it's like the ocean in the desert. It's a huge, huge difference. Plus you get to trade pre-market after market, which you never get to do OTC. And you need to look into that folks. You don't need any special permission or qualifications to trade then. Just get in there and trade. Just make sure to change your period for your, your trade. It's not a day trade, which is what's in there by default. You'll put your order in and nothing happens. And you go, I knew it didn't work. Not for me. Just change your time. It'll work. If it doesn't work, be sure to cancel that order because it's live. It'll go off when the market opens up. And last but not least, there's a lot more rules up on the major exchange, which is really the best part of it all, folks. This is the problem with the OTC is that they do and say a lot of things that nobody's monitoring. So we have the wool pulled over our eyes many, many times and we pay for it. So yeah, I like trading major exchange penny stocks over the OTC, but I do trade OTC as well. So what is Vivo Power International about? Well, they do a lot. They are a green energy company working in a lot of different sectors, doing a lot of different things. And we'll cover a little bit of it, but the news covers most of it. This does give us a great description of what they're doing. 
Devo Power International, together with its subsidiaries, operates as a sustainable energy solutions company in Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, the United States, the Philippines, and the United Arab Emirates. Let's just call them global. The company's got numerous divisions, critical power services, electric vehicles, sustainable energy solutions, solar development, and corporate office segments. And a quick description of each one of those. The critical power service segment offers energy infrastructure generation and distribution solutions, including the design, supply, installation, and maintenance of power and control systems to a range of government, commercial, and industrial customers. In other words, this is vertical. From start to finish, they cover everything. When it's all done and built, they're still monitoring your, your stuff. The electric vehicle segment designs and builds electric battery conversion kits for our gas cars. They replace the combustible engine with electric parts. So you don't need a whole new car. You can use your car. You got that old Mustang in the garage. They can convert those into electric vehicles. And they do this for a lot of fleets, companies that have lots and lots of cars. And instead of having to replace all the cars with new cars, they just convert these into electricity. And we're going to look at a piece of news. They just got a huge, huge contract to do that. The sustainable energy solutions segment engages in the design, evaluation, sale, and implementation of renewable energy infrastructure. And the solar development segment comprises solar projects. Duh. So they do do a lot in green energy, and I think they do more than they even say here because the news touches on to a few things. Speaking of news, let's go take a look at that right now. I have scrolled back here to end of August where they tell us that they were giving us a preliminary peekaboo at what their annual revenues were going to be before they came out. They told us it was going to be about $12 million. <clears throat> they had that wrong. It was more. <laughs> Yay. It was 15 million. So that was real good news. Then here, middle of September, the company, you ready for this one? This green company secures MPOC's diagnostic test distribution heads of agreement with Singapore, Hong Kong, and Australia with the company Sanyur Biotech. Why the heck would a green company get involved with MPOX? Well, they tell us here that Sanyur Biotech is a huge company over there in Hong Kong. They are a $1.4 billion market cap in vitro diagnostic solutions company listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. The MPOX virus footprint has a significant overlap with key markets where Vivo Power operates. That's their customer base. They don't want to lose them, including the Asia Pacific region, Australasia, wow, Africa, and the Middle East. Now, here's their motivation. Distribution agreement is part of Vivo's business continuity planning protocols aimed at safeguarding employees as well as facilitating distribution and supply to valued partners and customers. As a certified B corporation, Vivo Power is committed to the triple bottom line of people, planet, then profit. I don't know why they say end. Selected Vivo Power Management to fund pro bono distribution to disadvantaged communities. That's good. They're giving some of their money away to help people. Vivo Power intends to reinvest any surplus profits and cash generated from MPOX distribution agreements into its core sustainable energy solutions business. So they're sticking to what they're doing. They're not changing operations. They're just helping this company out because they have customer base over there and it's good for everybody anyways. And they're going to make some money that they can pour into their own business. Next piece of news is nice. Vivo Power and Future Automotive Solutions and Technologies, known as FAST, is merging together. They are going to be worth $1.1 billion, will be headquartered in the UK, and they're doing this for a very particular reason, folks. Um, yes, right. No, not that one. We're close. <laughs> ah, there it is. So many pages. So they tell us here that the UK remains an attractive market for hydrogen companies. 
Now, as far as I've seen, this company is not involved with hydrogen. So what are they doing here? The UK remains attractive market for hydrogen companies with significant incentives introduced and announced by the UK government. Being that they are using $21 billion to give away to companies that are going to help them get this hydrogen taken off in the country. Vivo has been in, headquartered in the UK since 2016. This is key why this merger is happening. Vivo Power International to merge with Future Automotive Solutions and Technologies, a hydrogen conversion technology company headquartered in Canada. Well, they can't get any of that money in the UK. They're from Canada. But if Vivo Power lets them use a parking place over here in the UK, now they are a UK company established since 2016 because the two companies will be merged together. Now, as far as I can see, and I haven't gone through all the details in this, you may want to dive into this. I may be wrong here, but this is a very clean deal for this company. They're basically renting a slot for this company to get into so they can qualify for some of this $21 billion of free money. And this company will probably get a percentage of that just given to them for allowing this company to be able to merge with them to get the money in the first place, right? So they're helping another company with hydrogen, which is a fantastic source of energy. As far as I'm concerned, it is where everybody is going to go. It's not going to replace nuclear. Nuclear is super duper clean energy. Yeah, it is a tiger, but it's a tiger in a cage. So we've got it under control and it does produce a lot of energy for us. But hydrogen, super duper clean, no CO2, also produces heat, produces water. It, it does a lot of good for everybody. And I think that is going to be king. And they are helping this company to move it around the UK, which again is this company's customer base. This is their headquarters. So it's good for everybody, including the company who will make money off of it. Vivo Power decides to close their F1 offering after successfully raising $4 million in gross proceeds from institutional investors. What they're basically saying here is that they were going to put more of their shares on the market to us, a public offering. Now they don't need to. They're not going to Put a public offering out there. They canceled it. We love to see that. And they got money from institutional investors in a whole different way. $4 million that just came into the company to help them. So now they got cash coming in there as well. Then we had a piece of news that came out on the 3rd of October. And I love this piece of news. Vivo Power's Tembo, that is their division that works on converting vehicles to electric, announces a definitive agreement with the preeminent jeepney group, Sarah Motors, in the Philippines, estimated $10 billion jeepney market. Now, this is interesting. Did I get it right this time? I did. Third time's a charm. Jeepney, first off, is a very unique vehicle that is used over in the Philippines. It is basically their taxis. But unlike our taxis, they're just not a two, three-seater car. They're like small buses or big vans. And unlike taxis, you know, think of New York, think of the yellow taxis. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a company that has tens of thousands. There are hundreds of thousands of these over there in the Philippines. And every single one of them is different. Every single one of them is customized to whatever the heck they want to do with them. And I mean, it is bizarre, but there's a lot of them and they're all combustible engines and they're all polluting. And that's where most of the pollution comes from over there in the Philippines. And this company's getting a contract to convert them. The Ionic Jeepneys are the main forum of public transportation in the Philippines with over 200,000 in service. Jeepneys account for approximately one third of the carbon emissions in the country. Established in 1953, Sarah Motors is Philippines preeminent Jeepney group. Sarah Motors selected Tembo to be exclusive partner to provide electric jeepneys. Tembo will continue to be able to work with other companies to provide electric jeepney solutions. This is the preeminent one, the biggest one, you know, like Yellow Taxis. There's other taxi companies, but Yellow's a real big one. So you've got one here that's real big, and this company is starting to work on them. 
They tell us here that Tembo will provide Cero with state-of-the-art and cost-effective solutions to electrify the next generation of public utility jeepneys. Deliveries of Tembo's electric jeepney kits are already en route to the Philippines and expected to be at Cerro's headquarters in Los Pinos City, Metro Manila, within the next weeks. And they tell us that this company has a very large facility, 20,000 square meters, based in prime location in the city. So they've got areas to work over there. And when you think about it, this is perfect for them. These people don't want to get rid of their vehicles. Not the way they've customized them. That's a lot of work. They want to keep their vehicle. Just pull out the guts from that gas engine and let's put it in the electric and voila, we're ready to go. Quieter, cleaner. There's still too many of them, but yeah, that is awesome. So I am real excited about this, folks, because this is just the start of something. This is just one company working with Jeepneys and there are lots and lots more over there. And like I said, it is something that can be done to any vehicle. Honestly, you could probably get in touch with the company if you want to convert your own favorite car. They would probably do it for you. So let's take a look at what the relative volume was for this company today. Oh, it's dropped by about 40%, 35%, something like that. Going from roughly 13 million shares a day. Is that? No, my bad. 1.2 million shares a day over the last 30 days. Today, she didn't even do a million. She did just under 800,000 shares. Share structure. Please let it be low. Oh, we do. No, I didn't peek over here. I was too busy trading all day. Outstanding share count is only like 2.6 million. Folks, our float can't be any higher than the outstanding share count. And the insiders are going to own something. I don't know what they own, but you got to subtract that from the outstanding share count. So whatever we got here, it is a super duper low float. So when this company gets volume and normally when you have breakouts, they start looking at tempting to investors who are watching charts. They see the breakouts happening. That's when everybody starts coming in because they all know that's the green light. It's starting to move. Let's get in there. So we've got a great float for this stock to be working with. Taking a look at the financials. Are they making any money? Oh, that don't look good. Now, does it? Over the last four years, their revenues have been falling. Now, we do have to put three zeros behind any of these numbers. So we are talking millions of dollars. But over the last four years, they've dropped 50%. Actually, a little more from 33 million down to 15 million. And worse than that, they're not making profits anymore. <laughs> Ouch down to 2.2 million negative in this last, this last quarter or this last annual, which they told us they were going to make 11 million. They did make more. They didn't tell us they were going to lose more. So we need to see some money coming in. Quarterlies, I haven't had one of those since 2019, but we do get a balance sheet. Now those three zeros carry over to here as well. So their cash and their cash equivalents, which I like to think of as the bank, we got about 1.1 million in the bank. Total assets, all the money everybody owes them, everything they own, 61 and a half million. All their liabilities, all their debt, everything they still got to pay for, 57, 58 million. So we do have some stockholder equity here. We've got 3.7 million. Why do I keep doing that? 3.7 million. That's positive. We do have some revenues coming in. It's a lot less than it was a while ago, and they're losing money right now. However, we do see a lot of catalysts sitting on the table talking about money. Huge contract, that deal over in the UK, renting out space so that company can get some of that $21 billion. Don't know when that's going to happen, but these are ahead of us. Now, as day traders, I'm looking for stocks that we can get in and out of in a day or two. I know two days isn't day trading. That's a small swing, but that's what I'm looking for. But this company looks good for a swing with all those sort of catalysts with money about ready to come in. All these new conversion kits just getting over there to the Philippines in the next couple of weeks. Right now is a good time to look at getting in for 25% of what you want, a good entry price. And when she dips, because you don't know what's going to happen, you buy more then. As she starts to rise, you get the rest of what you want. I like this company for a short play and I'm liking this company for a long play. And I really like the fact that they put people first 
I mean, that matters, folks. There's a lot of companies that don't give a second thought to customer base, to the planet. All they think about is money, money, money. And that's good for investors. I'm not saying it's bad, but it does feel good to be alongside a company that gives a hoot about everything we care about as well. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. Y'all ready to take a look at VVPR? Me too. <laughs> God, Vivo Power opened up to a one-day, one-year chart on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Now, when you look at the 200-day MA here, over the last year, it says she's been in a slight downtrend, but for the last three months, she has gone flat. That 200-day MA is flat as a pancake right now. But the truth of the matter is, the price was not following the 200. She was flat for a real long time. She took a dip, came back up, and really didn't go anywhere. Then we had just tremendous breakout right here, which you'll see on the four hour chart is a breakout on the 200. She jumped from, oh God, it looks like about a buck 40, buck 50, all the way up to $10. Over 600% run right there, folks. She came back down, fell underneath the 200, took another jump here from the same price, a buck 50, buck 40, and she went up to $3.30. Once she got on top of the 200, she jumped again from 230 to 460. My point, she loves that small float. She bounces hard, folks. When volume comes in, look, every time volume comes in, this thing takes a huge run. We haven't seen the volume come in yet. I see a little itty bitty green dot there, but it ain't big yet. I'm expecting it to get bigger. Let's jump on down to our six month, four hour view. So there's that big jump. You can see the 200 was falling, the price was creeping, and right there the two met and she exploded. Came all the way back down underneath the 200. 200 was rising, falling, right here it went flat. That's when breakouts happen. They don't happen when the 200 is falling. They happen when it's flat or climbing. Normally flat, and that's exactly what happened here. She jumped from that dollar thirty first as a signal up to three fifty, fell all the way back down to two ten, and from there jumped up to five dollars and sixty cents. Whoa, two hundred and fifty percent run right there, folks. She came all the way back down. She hit this low of seventy two cents, which is our fifty two week low. She hit that at the beginning of the month. And right now she is starting to turn up. She was going flat. She was underneath every single MA. All of them were over her head. As she was going sideways, she was making progress. She wasn't climbing, but she was crossing these MAs. She crossed the 20, the 200 haul, the 50. And once she got on top of the 50, she started to climb. We got three good green bars here and our volume is starting to come in. Our oscillators, our PPO has just had a crossover today and is starting to climb. PPO is percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. You want that blue line on top of the other line climbing. But the PPO uses a percentage of the price and the MACD uses the whole price. Well, our MACD right now is also on an uptrend. Look at that, folks. She's just had her crossover on the signal line here and lots of green bars accumulating, each one getting bigger and bigger. And look what we got down here. We are in the overbought. We are up there now at almost 72. Now, I want to make mention here because a lot of people are told overbought is a bad thing. You can hear it. It's overbought. <laughs> Folks, don't let anybody talk you out of getting into a stock for a short play that's overbought. You're only in it for a little while, so you want as much heat as you can possibly get. This is looking great, and it was overbought all day. So, yeah, it's going to come down sooner or later, but not necessarily sooner. Take a look now at our 20-day, one-hour. Well, we've got a downtrend, right? She broke through that 200, came underneath it, poked her head up for air. She's been falling, hit that 52-week low, went sideways, and there's our 200 on our one-hour chart, which is the one I said I really liked. You can see she beelined it straight over that 200. She was on the 50, and just all of a sudden, she took off. We weren't even waiting for our 200 haul. The 200 haul down here, which is just as strong as your 200 MA. It has m as much authority as the 200 MA. The difference is, is that the 200 haul is friendly to the price. 
The 200 MA don't give a hoot about the price. It'll beat it down. But the 200 Haw, every opportunity it gets to help push it, it pushes that nicely. But even when she turned blue here, we were not getting any help from it. The 200 MA coming down, 200 Haw coming up, price getting squeezed in between, and pop, and all of our MAs are climbing now. We just had our first golden cross. The nine day crossing the 200 gives extra oomph to power. We got the 20 and the 50 coming up. That's going to help the price rise. Those are going to be golden crosses as well. And the volume was pretty thick today. When you look at the other days, even the day we had strong volume here, it was popcorn off and on. This was thick pretty much all day. And all of our osculators, every single one of them, is at a nice steady incline and growing right now. And our RSI is now up to 82. Take a look at our five day, 15 minute. <laughs> wow. You know, I saw this stock at around 1230 and we were, <laughs> we were trading stocks over there at Penny Boys. We had lots of stocks on the table, lots we were watching, TV, GN. She was bouncing around today. I never brought this one up. I'm not quite sure why, but that was a hot stock to play today, folks. She had solid growth all day. Look at this. She started off pre-market at uh, 77 cents, ended at 99 cents, went sideways. Look at these nice bars, up and down, up and down, up and down, right on top. Now she is bouncing off of that nine day. All of our MAs are pushing up nice, evenly smooth. This is looking great. Our osculators, our PPO is cooling off just a bit, but come on, the chart looks good. Uh, same thing with our MACD. We did have a couple red bars in there. And our RSI currently is at 67, just under the overbought. Folks, this needs to be watched. If you get an opportunity to look at this tomorrow morning, pre-market, you may want to check this out. Now, if you're going to play it pre-market, let me give you one piece of personal advice. I can't guarantee this is the way it'll go. But if it runs pre-market, make your pre-market play its own play. Don't come through the, the bell with any holdings. Normally, if you have a strong run pre-market at the bell, the people that don't play pre-market never look at the pre-market. They open up their computer, their device, and they see the chart is way up. First time they've seen it, what do they do? Yes, they sell. Lots of people sell. So you instantly have a drop, not because there's anything wrong, but because people are taking their profits. Once they sell off, then the buyers come back in and continue that run. So you look for that floor, look for it to lay out on something and start to bounce. And we're looking for three green bars on your shorter time frames. One minute, maybe two minute, maybe five minute. 15 minutes is a long time. But truth of the matter is you should be watching a stock for 10 minutes before you get into it. 9.30 to 9.40, just lock your hands up, folks. It's not a race. It's not a race. I had to get over that feeling. For many years, I felt when that bell went off, I had to find something now or I was missing out. You're not. You're rushing in, and that's going to get you into more trouble than profits. So take the first 10 minutes to just look around, see how the market's moving. This allows you to place your bet on the horse after the horses start running. Where else do you get to do that, right? So I'm liking VPPR's chart. I think the chart is hot. I think we've got lots of catalysts. We've got lots of reasons to run. The company isn't in the best condition, but it's not in bad condition. So I would put VVPR on my watch list for tomorrow. Absolutely tomorrow. But keep an eye on this, folks. She's just starting her breakout on the hourly chart. Hasn't even reached a breakout on the four hourly chart. And if this four hourly, that's right. <laughs> if this keeps on climbing, we could see some good strong rise out of it. VVPR, it's my hot stock of the day. Do some more due diligence though. I didn't cover everything about this company. Go to their website, see what they talk about. Maybe you'll like this company more for a swing. But that doesn't mean you can't take the quick gains it gives us tomorrow. Grab those, let it settle down, and then get in for the longer play. Remember, the more plays you make, the more wins you can have. The more wins you have, the better you're going to feel. It's not about how much money you get on each win. Don't even worry about how much money you're getting. I'm serious. Don't even worry about it. If you win your trade because you planned it out, you knew when you were getting out, when things were good, 
You knew when you were getting out, when things were bad, and you got a stop loss in there. If it goes real bad, it's an emergency exit. Throws you right out of that car before it crashes. You're going to make profit. You're going to make money. At the end of the day, you can count your pennies. In the meantime, just keep winning those trades. Find probable moves. Get in, get out, take the gains. Don't count it. Find another probable move. Do three, four, five of those a day, folks. I'm talking short trades. 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most. No frustration, no hoping, no worrying, no wondering. You know what's going on. When you have a plan, you remove the emotional instability of trading. I like it. Thanks for being here, folks. Hope I shared something worthy of your time. We'll see you next time. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. 